Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. And today we're going to talk about my favorite part of the dry dock. That is the caisson behind me here. The caisson is one of the most important parts of the dry dock. It keeps the water on the outside. So you can see uh, behind me on this horizon line where the water level is of the Delaware River. And you can see that there's roughly a 50 foot deep pit here without water. Well, largely without water. One of my favorite things about the caisson is uh, we get this nice waterfall sound effect coming through it. That's great to have a battleship Zen garden for those days when you get bad news like uh, we've just found three nautical miles or 18,000 linear feet of caulk on the ship or the shell plating at the bow in an 80 foot long section is wasted away to quarter inch. It's, it's nice to have a, a, a Zen garden to go to to uh, relax. So um, besides how does a curator relax, today we're going to talk about how the, the caisson works for the dry dock. I've dry docked a couple ships in my time, uh, floating dry docks, ship lifts, even marine railways, but this is the first time I've put a ship in a graving dock. The assumption is that the door to the dry dock, the caisson, would be hinged in some way, whether it flips up or turns out or is multiple pieces. Uh, that's what you would expect, right? Not that the caisson is its own individual free-floating vessel, which it is. So, if I wanted to remove the battleship from dry dock, which I do want to do in a couple of weeks, what you would do is you would flood the dry dock with about 37 million gallons of water. That will equalize the level inside the dry dock with the river behind us. At that point, the pressure of the river is no longer holding the caisson against its uh, gasket. Yeah. That's right, the only thing holding this caisson in place is the water pressure on the outside pressing it up against the, the entrance to the caisson. That's wild. So once the caisson is no longer being pushed against the gasket, then you can pump it out or dewater it. The caisson is filled with water right now to have it sitting that deep. So you pump it out and it's going to rise up so that it will float just like a, any other vessel. Now, the cool thing about the caisson is that it is keystone shaped. In fact, the entire dry dock is keystone shaped. It's 114 feet wide at the bottom, 144 feet wide at the top. And that keystone shape means that uh, as the caisson floats away, if it was just straight walled, it would stay in contact with the wall the entire time. But since it is keystone shaped, as the caisson floats away, it is separating from the wall so it can now move. At that point, a tugboat has to come, grab the caisson, and then take it to another pier, like Pier 6 behind me over here. You pull out one ship, you bring in the next ship, you bring the caisson back, you flood it so that it starts to sink down into position, you still have to hold it in place with that tugboat, and then once the caisson is in position, you can start dewatering the dry dock, which is going to mean that the water pressure on the outside of the caisson is greater than the water pressure on the inside of the caisson. So it is pressing that caisson in place. The problem here is, as the caisson is settling in place, there's still water running around it. And this being the Delaware River, that water isn't pure fresh water. It's bringing in silt, it's bringing in uh, logs, debris, garbage, all that other stuff that's out there. And so some of that gets trapped between the gasket and the keyway where the uh, caisson slots into, which means that you don't get a perfect watertight fit. So that is why you notice uh, significant leaking around the caisson. That's fine. You'll notice that the section where the caisson sits is a little bit deeper than the rest of the dry dock floor. That's intentional. It's like the sump in your basement. Uh, th there is a separate pump in there that's running to constantly circulate that water back into the river, significantly smaller than the main pumps that dewater the entire dry dock. And my friend Danny, who works at the yard here, told me some of the history of this particular caisson. Now, obviously, this dry dock dates back to 1921, when riveted construction was the norm. And this caisson is uh, clearly welded. You can see the, uh, the seams on it. So, uh, when did this caisson get brought in? 
Apparently, the older caisson was worn out right around the time that New York ship shut down in Camden, New Jersey. When that shipyard shut down, a lot of the stuff over there came over to the Philadelphia Navy Yard, which at that time was uh, doing a lot of the SLEP work, Service Life Extension Program, on the aircraft carriers. One of the things that came over was the caisson to one of those dry docks. Now, it was too wide to fit this dry dock, so they cut a chunk out of the middle and then welded it back together. Another interesting fact about the uh, caisson that Danny told me is that it is two-sided. It's got an A side and a B side. So, so every dry docking, you could flip the caisson and it works just as fine each way so that one side is uh, in here dewatered so that you can do maintenance work on it. And then the next time you do it the other way, you can do maintenance work on the opposite side. We don't yet have a final departure date in mid-June, but before we leave, this caisson's gonna be taken out of the way, so be sure to stay tuned for an upcoming live stream when the battleship is towed away. And uh, we'll post all about that on our social media, what the date's gonna be, when the live stream's gonna happen, all that stuff. So stay tuned for more information on that. And if you wanna see this caisson doing its job, be sure to buy tickets for the dry dock tours. There's only a few left uh, for the first couple of weekends in June. There's a link in the description below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to donate to support the museum. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about the museum and our channel. Thanks for watching.